everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. Tonight's going to be the final part, part four, for the GE404 AM radio. And I'm a little disappointed in myself because obviously I actually did the electrical restoration on it and actually had it working. And then I decided to try and make it better and like I usually do when I try and make something better I usually screw it up. But, that being said, I did do some of your suggestions. I took the voltage checks. They checked out pretty much on money. Uh, I did check the oscillator. The oscillator was working. But when I had done my 455 kilocycle test um, alignment, as well as the 1620 alignment through the antenna, I was swamping it. I actually was running five volts in there um, with the 50% amplitude. I turned it down to one volt, as on my digital signal generator, and I retuned it, um, realigned it, using the one volt, and I actually got it to oscillate and make some noise on the lower half of the scale, about halfway. From the bottom to about halfway, I could make noise and then it was quiet. So. Apparently, I screwed something up in that um, I have transformer, but I decided, you know what, I have one radio station that's AM around here, and it's a talk radio, and my daughter wants this radio to play music on, so I added the Bluetooth to it, and it sounds really good. So I decided we're going to leave it there, and that's what we've got. So anyhow, we'll get the rest of the radio put together uh, tonight. I'll let you hear it, and we'll have some before and after photos. Considering I thought that this was a pretty ugly radio when I started, it's actually a very pretty radio, and my daughter's very happy with it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, I'm in the process of uh, putting this radio chassis back into the cabinet. I've got the speaker all cleaned up. I've got that all bolted in there, and uh, as you can see, it cleaned up pretty good. I did put my finger through the speaker like I knew I probably would at some point but it's all patched up on the back side I didn't show you that you guys have seen me patch it before with the coffee filter and I used some of the clear glue on the back side over there too but it's patched up it works fine let me show you the chassis where and what I did on the front of that oh before I show you that here's the metal plate it goes on the bottom of the chassis between the cabinet and the bottom of the chassis that plate that cleaned up really nice turned out real nice so let me move this off the bench and I'll show you the chassis okay so if you guys remember this metal plate they run across here it had what appeared to be flocking on it if you remember me telling you it had flocking on it now this was the piece and you see this cruddy and it had flocking and pretty thin, almost like construction paper with flocking. So I went ahead and got some black construction paper and made it. And then I remembered I had some self-adhesive black felt. So I took and covered that piece of cardboard that was on the metal because there was cardboard glued to that metal. This is the metal right here that the actual um, indicator runs on. Well, that was covered with a piece of cardboard that was about, well, it was exactly this, only it was cardboard thicker. So what I did was I put the self-adhesive felt on there, and I think that turned out really nice. Let me zoom in on a little bit for you, if you guys can see that. So, it looks like flocking to me, and I think it works like flocking. Um, everything clears it. You can move the indicator really nice across there. So that's the way we're going to put it back together again is with that. Got the bulb, that part was bent so that the light can get in there. And uh, let me get this chassis back into the cabinet and we'll see what it looks like.
show you how I did this. Also the GE down there was done by my son-in-law using an ultra fine tip gold sharpie. Paint. It's a paint sharpie in gold. Ultra fine tip. Okay so here's how I did that. Um, indicator try and get a pointer here I guess actually I have a pointer on my computer anyway I was gonna go like this and point to stuff but there's no reason to point to it because I use my pointer so the first thing I did was I took a picture of the front of the radio and try to keep my camera as level as possible but as you can see I didn't it's kind of going downhill as you go over high here and it goes downhill but you can also see this was a 60 and the white's pretty much gone from this stuff, right? So the first thing I needed to do to be able to fix this was I had to go online uh, and find a app that would allow me to turn this image into to a monochrome image. And so I did. I found that program, which I don't remember what program it was now. But anyway, I took that and I monochromed it. Basically what that did was made everything that was darker obviously than everything else uh, black and then everything that was white white. Now this lighter section here this isn't from my, my uh, lights in here in my basement this is actually um, from the lights that were on the, the radio at the time I took the picture but it had filled most of that in this white down here, this line across here, it was still white on the thing. So anyway, I took that and I copied it into my paint program, just my Microsoft Paint. Uh, here, Paint. I don't like Paint 3D, I always use this paint. Anyway, I copied that in there and proceeded to fix all of the flaws, which, now let me see if I can open this. Let's see, File open back to my desktop we got this capture here I believe so this is this was the one that I was going to modify after it was mono, mono blah, made monochromatic this is not the monochromatic version hold on a second let me get the other one so just like that Let's get rid of that file open desktop this one, I think this is it. No. Don't save. Yes. Okay. So this is the one here that I uh, went ahead and cleaned up. So anything, and I zoomed in on this thing so big, I mean, I was like zooming in, making it super big like that. So the first thing I did was I took a different color and created like a line so let's see if we just make it red for the heck of it I knew I was going downhill so what I did was I grabbed the top corner and obviously this was before everything was filled in like it is right now but I grabbed the top corner 
and like drug it all the way over so I knew I had a straight line right see how when you get it off it's, you can see it's not straight any longer and I used a finer line than this and then I did the same thing with the bottom so that's how I got my dimension and then I went back and created you know verticals that I knew were actually vertical you know for each one of these every one of these little indicator digit things I did that and uh, then I took uh, good known good numbers like the five that was in pretty good shape I used that and I used that size to modify other numbers that weren't so good <clears throat> I had a six I think over on the 160 that was pretty good you know, over here and I used that six is what I used for the 60 that was missing and and I did the same thing with the numbers as I did with the line I, I started a line at the top of the five went straight across a line at the top of the six went straight across <clears throat> and ultimately that's how I came up with something that then I gave to my son-in-law who has a Cricut vinyl cutter who I gave him the file and he put it in there and sized it appropriately for the radio and he uh, did the cut on that and used transfer tape and put it on the radio and that's what we got so a little bit of work not a lot of work it took me a couple hours to fix that file but uh, yeah that's how I did it this side show you that I was real happy with how it turned out